In today's video, how to transition from a cut to a bulk. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Paul Arbella from ProPhysique. Dot com. I hope you guys had a wonderful Easter. Happy Monday to you guys. Um, and for all those people that are not like us in the U.S., we tend to just celebrate Easter on a Sunday, but I know in Australia it's more like a three or four or five day thing. In some other countries, Easter is like a week long thing. So hope you guys are all having a nice Easter holiday week. And uh, let's talk a little bit about the topic at hand. Again, great question coming from my Instagram direct messages. So if you're not following my Instagram, it's at Paul Ravella. And uh, if you just want to direct message me your questions, might get you featured on here. I try to get to as many of them as I can. And uh, if you asked it a while ago and it hasn't been answered, go ahead and ask it again because I do start to get like, um, you know, a lot of flow, a lot of traffic in there and I'm not really going back too far. I'm just going back for the best question. So let's talk about today's question. Um, the question, as you'll see here, was basically proposed, how do you go, what's the best way to go about putting on muscle? Um, and within that, some sub-questions, but I'm only going to address the first one, and that is, how do you transition from a cut into a bulk? I feel like this is a very, very, very important topic because so many of us know how to lose weight. It's pretty simple. Eat less, do more, right? Like, that's a pretty simple equation. But what do you do once you reach your goal? And I realize not everyone's going to track their calories so specifically and track their diet so specifically as we as the competitive bodybuilding population might. So I want to give you some general guidelines for how do you go from a cut to a bulk. And um, I think the first thing we want to talk about is the term bulk. I think early on when I was younger, when you heard the term bulk, it implied this magical period where you ate as much of whatever you wanted as you could. You know, you ate pizza three, four times a day. You had milkshakes, hamburgers, because eating that way was going to produce some magnificent, magnificent results. Meaning there was something super anabolic to overeating, right? Not just eating enough, but overeating. Um, I now know that to be false. I know that body fat is stored much quicker than muscle is built. And generally at the end of a fat loss phase, you are not primed to put on muscle. At the end of a contest prep, you are not primed to put on muscle. These were things that used to be touted in like bodybuilding magazines. You know, at the end of a bodybuilding prep or at the end of a fat loss phase, your body is primed to put on muscle. Well, we've actually seen case studies where that is not the case, um, especially for, for hormones. Our hormones become very much adapted and during a fat loss phase, you know, for males, testosterone is gonna be a little bit lower. Uh, quite a bit lower for some in some of the case studies that we've seen. And when it comes to the ability to store body fat, well, when our bodies get metabolically adapted to lower calories, guess what that primes them for? That's right, you are now primed for fat storage, right? Our bodies get very, very good at extracting calories from food. These are some of the adaptations that occur when you eat low calorie for a long period of time. That's why food tastes so good. That's why cravings are so high. That's why when you eat, you get hungrier, right? Your hormones, your digestive system, your metabolism are all designed to keep us alive. They're not designed to make you look good at the beach in your board shorts. No, sir. They are designed, our body is designed for survival. So after a period of long caloric restriction, our bodies are now primed for fat storage. Why? Fat is energy. It's basically our body can survive on just fat. Hence, if you see people on the internet now doing the water diet where they have nothing but water for a day, a week, a month, a year, whatever it is, that's not some new concept. That's actually been around for a while. Um, there's been some documented case studies of people that were obese that had nothing but water for long periods of time and they survived just fine um, under medical supervision. So don't go trying this without medical supervision, but you see your body can break down Body fat is very calorically dense and our bodies can run on it. Um, if you're really interested in this topic, um, you know, that's basically what ketosis is. When you don't ingest any calories, your body goes into a state of ketosis and you're now burning body fat as fuel. Ketones become the source for the brain and the body to run. So way off topic on that, but I just wanted to give you guys the concept of why I don't like the term bulk because bulk implies that there's something beneficial. So 
I don't really like the term bulk. Let's just talk about a caloric surplus. Muscle building takes a very long time, okay? So we don't need to be eating tons and tons of calories over what our maintenance is, right? Another thing to understand, maintenance, as it were, when you started dieting and at what maintenance is when you end dieting are two different numbers. It's not a static number, it's very dynamic, it's very movable. So you can move the needle on your maintenance calories lower or higher, okay? so. What do we do at the end of a cut? Well, the first thing I would do is gradually walk your calories up. If you're not really tracking and you're not really 100% sure what you're doing, you can start by just adding in, keep your kind of meals the same, and just maybe adding in a little bit of extra protein, a little bit of extra carbs each day, not overdoing it, just a little bit each day, um, and kind of holding steady there. And then maybe after a week, if the scale is stable and you feel good, then you can add a little bit more food. Another thing that's a big mistake people make, when they go into a fat loss phase for a goal, like let's say you want to look good on the beach, you're going to a reunion, or even those of us that compete in bodybuilding shows, I made this mistake. Competed in my bodybuilding show, show is over, why am I going to stick around at the gym and do my 30, 45 minutes of cardio? Why? I don't need to do cardio anymore. So I just cut it out completely, and that's a big mistake, okay? This is something that your body has adapted to. So instead of just cold turkey getting rid of your cardio, taper out of the cardio, okay? Taper off of it slowly. Um, for most people, that's gonna be what I suggest. You know, does cardio interfere with muscle building? Yes, that's documented. The science, the literature, it's very clear. There is an interference effect, but I do believe there is a healthy amount of cardio that you should be doing. I like three to four sessions, 10 to 15 minutes per week. I think it helps reduce inflammation, helps with cardiovascular health, just helps with overall well-being, and it can help with some body composition. I mean, we've seen some of the cool research that's out now about the benefits of walking um, post-meal, so you can use it as a post-meal. I like to use it as a pre-workout warm-up, um, and then I'll take a couple walks throughout the day if I have the, the time and the freedom to do so. So yeah, there's a lot of benefits to just being active, but don't, at the end of a fat loss phase, completely cut out your cardio. That is one way to put on body fat rapidly. And at the end of the day, that's really our goal is to avoid rapid body fat regain, okay? At the end of a fat loss phase, there's nothing worse than seeing the scale jump up five, 10, 15 pounds in a matter of days um, or even you know a couple days or a week because you know it can take months of hard work and dedication. So one thing I wanna preach, and this sounds very boring to be preachy on a Monday morning, but is that this is a lifestyle, you know, and this is a mistake I made early on. I changed my lifestyle to fit the goal of getting on a bodybuilding stage, um, but I kinda went back into my old habits after that first bodybuilding show. Now granted, I was a lot younger. Um, my interests after my first bodybuilding show were more social. I wanted to get back to my normal life, going out drinking with my friends, having fun, doing that kind of thing. As I've transitioned into bodybuilding as a lifestyle, you know, I'd say the highs are less high and the lows are less low. I don't, I don't let my weight get so high and I don't let my calories get so low. I kind of, you know, so I think if you are making this a lifestyle, it'll be much better off for you. If you're using a flexible dieting approach, if you're doing things that you generally enjoy um, to get lean, maybe you just do a little bit less of it when you don't need to be shredded, right? Like, depending on how lean you get when you're coming out of a cut, um, yeah, you don't want to always be that lean. Bodybuilding, being stage lean, might not be healthy, but it's not for a long term. It's for a very specific goal. So I'm not worried about being healthiest I can be when I'm on a bodybuilding stage, right? I'm worried about being the most shreddedest I can be. Coin that term. That word is mine, shreddedest. Um, so yeah, the, the, the big thing that we want to discuss here is making this a lifestyle, as in, when you transition from a cut to a bulk, it shouldn't be this huge thing that you're changing. You shouldn't be changing all the foods you're eating, all the cardio you're doing, all the weights you're lifting. It should be simple transitions. And that's the one thing that's allowed me to kind of maintain, feel better year round, is that I no longer treat it as two extremes. I treat it as, you know, I'm very, very minimally changing things. When I go into prep, I just eat a little bit less, do a little more cardio. When I'm out of prep, I, I eat a little bit more freely and I do a little bit less cardio. But but there's never this huge disparity between the two like there used to be. Um, and I think that's the best way I could answer your question. How do you transition from a cut to a bulk? Start adding some calories back in gradually. Start reducing calorie, start reducing cardio gradually and don't treat it like two different lifestyles, okay? Just because the cut's over doesn't mean you can go back to your previous lifestyle and keep the progress you've changed. There's always going to be work associated with staying 
healthy, with staying in good shape, with staying happy, with staying six pack. There's always going to be work associated with that. Don't try to find a way around the work. Try to find a way to make yourself enjoy the work you're doing and it'll be much more sustainable. And you'll wake up with a smile on your face because you're jacked and shredded year round. All right guys, this is Paul from ProPhysique.com. Hope you guys are off to an awesome week and I'll talk to you tomorrow. I'm not so